to stop sabotaging yourself, you must first recognize when you are getting in your own way. Some of the time we are painfully aware of this. Like when we find ourselves procrastinating before taking care of a mess, so that it becomes a bigger deal to clean up later. Or we impulsively buy a large bag of potato chips when we are trying to cut back on junk food. Of course, other times we are less aware of our self-sabotage or we misunderstand the core problem. To stop sabotaging yourself, you need to figure out your thinking patterns and your patterns of behavior and then find creative ways to counteract them and form new habits. Mel Robbins is one of the most booked speakers in the world. Let's hear what she has to say about self-sabotage. Every human being has a five-second window. It might even be shorter for you. You have about a five-second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them. In the smallest moment, when you set goals, when you have an intention on something that you want to change about your life, your brain helps you. What it does is it opens up a checklist and then your brain goes to work trying to remind you of that intention that you set. And it's really important to develop the skill and I, I say that word purposefully, the skill of knowing how to hear that inner wisdom and that intention kicking in and leaning into it quickly. So for me, my brain saying, that's it, right there, move as fast as a rocket melt. I wanted to change my life. And I think most people that are miserable or that are, that are really like dying to be great and dying to have more, we want to change. We want to live a better life. We want to create more for our families. We want to be happier. The, the desire is there. Again, it's about how do you go from knowledge to action. So the first thing in this story that's important is realizing that the answer was in me. And my mind was telling me, pay attention. At some point, I think we all hit that moment in life where things just are not going how you thought they would go. And what's amazing about those moments is we all respond very differently. So my husband, he would spring out of bed and he would head right out that door, six o'clock in the morning, and he would go meet his partner and they would go to the bank and they would dig right in and they would face their problems head on. And I, he's also a smart guy. I mean, he did not want to be in the house when yours truly woke up because <laughs> I was a raging bitch at that point in our lives. And the reason why is because when you're scared and you're afraid and you're jealous and you're overwhelmed with emotion, it is so much easier to point the finger at other people. That's a decision, by the way. Sure. One, you may not be aware that you're making, but you're still making it. So what would happen to me is the exact opposite, is, is Chris would be gone, the alarm would go off at six o'clock in the morning, and I would lie there. And I would think about the lien on the house, and I would think about the bankruptcy that we were facing, and I would think about how much we had fought the night before, and I would think about the fact that I was unemployed, and I would hit the snooze button. Why would you get up when your life is like that? Why would you? I, I mean, I needed confidence, I needed courage. I was so tapped out. In the scheme of life, hitting the snooze button is not that big of a deal. But here's the thing about life. None of us wake up and say, today is the day I destroy my life. What we do is we kind of check out because it feels overwhelming or we check out because we're afraid, or we check out because we start listening to self-doubt, and then we make these teeny tiny decisions all day long. We don't even realize it. A decision to not get up on time, a decision to not eat the right thing, a decision to snap at your kids, a decision to not speak in a meeting, a decision to not look for a job, a decision to not deal with your finances, a decision to not call your parents, like whatever it is. All day long, these tiny decisions that take you so far off track. And then you wake up like I did and, and you, you look at your life and you think, how the hell did I get here? And more importantly, how do you get back over there? And you have no idea. And so I was so trapped. And I know from your story, you felt the same way. Like you knew that there was more in store for you, but you couldn't figure out how do you close the gap? How do you find the power that's in you? How do you discover your greatness? How do you solve these problems? It feels so overwhelming. When you can't, I mean, I would go to the grocery store and the items would scan and I would be sitting there readying my excuse because there was no way that my check card was going to clear. So what I got in this struggle with myself that a lot of us find ourselves in, and that is 
you get trapped in what I call the knowledge action gap. You know what to do, but you can't seem to make yourself do it. I mean, every one of us is one Google search away from a list of instructions that if you follow any of them, it will change your life. But how do you get out of your head and stop thinking about what you need to do and actually do it?